Right, moving on with our trig stuff, and we're looking at compound angle formulae. Okay, so we have, for all angles, that upside down A is a, a symbol used that means for all. So for all angles A and B, we have the following things happen. Now, the proof of these formulae is in your black textbook if you want to look it up, but you do not need to reproduce that at any time, so you don't have to learn those proofs. But if you're interested for how we came about um, having these formulae, you can go look it up. For now, I'm just going to tell you what they are. So sine of A plus B is identically equal to sine A cos A plus cos A sine B. You'll see some patterns emerging here. And if we do sine A minus B, we get sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. You can see how they match up. We can also do similar things with cos. So cos of A plus B is cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. And cos of A minus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Notice with cos that the, the symbol is the opposite each time. Now in your formula book, these won't be written out as four separate things. We're actually, we can actually combine these. So take out that other one and we'll put in this plus minus symbol instead so that you know when you're adding them it's going to be sine A cos B plus sine A cos, B, uh, cos A sine B and when you're subtracting you would subtract those two things on the right similarly with the cos but you just got to be careful because they do the opposite things so we've got a plus minus and then a minus plus so that it helps you remember that when you add them you subtract the cos A cos B sine A sine B thing and we've got something similar with tan as well tan of a plus or minus b is the same as tan a plus or minus uh, tan b all divided by 1 minus plus tan a tan b so that works in the same way so if you were doing tan a plus b you would get tan a plus tan b all over 1 minus tan a tan b so those symbols the order that you write them in is really important to whether you have a plus or a minus there Let's see how some of these work then. So, find the exact values of these two things. So we want, we don't have any special formulas or things memorized for cos of 75, but we can make it using some that we do know have special properties. So 75 is the same as 45 plus 30. 45 plus 30, we've got special properties about those. We can find uh, some exact values of them. So cos of 45, that gives us 1 over root 2, then cos 30 is root 3 over 2, sine 45 is 1 over root 2, and sine 30 is a half. You can see now why those ones are so important to memorise. If you haven't memorised that table of values already from the last video, make sure you do it after watching this video. Okay, so now just working that through, and put it over a common denominator. But, you know, we're, we're not usually happy if we've got thirds on the bottom of a denominator, so we're going to rationalise it. So we get root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. Cos 15 similarly is the same as 45 minus 30, so we'll go through the same process. Following that formula, we've got cos cos plus sine sine. And we're just going to copy down those values from above because they're the same, except this time we're adding them together. So I won't work through all of those steps. You can see that goes through to root 6 plus root 2 over 4. Okay, slightly harder. We're looking at this one now where sine A is 8 over 17, sine B is 12 over 13. We're told that A is obtuse and B is acute. Um, and we want to find tan of A plus B. So we need to unpack the information we've got there. To get tan, we need to know tan of A and tan of B. So we, to get tan of A and tan B, we need to know cos of each of them because tan is sine over cos. So let's use this to work out cos. You know sine squared plus cos squared equals one. So cos squared A will be one minus cos, sine squared A and cos squared B would be one minus sine squared b. So we just square those values that we were given in the question and work that through. And then cos a will be plus or minus the square root of 225 over 289 and cos b will be the square root of 25 over 169 plus or minus. Now we need to figure out whether we want the positive or the negative of that and that's where knowing that they're obtuse and acute is, is helpful. So think about the graph 
of the cos function. So we're told first of all that A is obtuse meaning it's between 90 and 180. Now in that portion of the graph, the cos curve is below the x-axis, so it's negative. So cos of A will take the negative value, minus 15 over 17. We'll do the same with B. B is acute, so it's between 0 and 90. And at that portion of the graph, the curve is positive, so cos B will take the positive value, 5 over 13. Now we can work out tan of A by doing sine over cos. And we can work out tan of B by doing sine over cos and work that through. Now we can put it into our formula for tan A plus B. That'll be tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. Put those numbers in that we just worked out. And we get our final answer of 140 over 171.